What's the secret to happiness? How can you be happy, stay happy for longer? That's what we're going to talk about today in the Someday Arrival podcast. So is there a way to guarantee happiness, to feel happy all of the time? If we had the secret to that, we'd probably be very rich, wouldn't we? We'd probably be uh, in great demand. I was floored, stopped in my tracks the other day, by watching a video of an actor called Terry Crews. He said, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. He was talking about getting to a point on a movie set where he was surrounded by much, much more famous, uh, better paid actors. In relative terms, he wasn't getting the the tens of millions of dollars. And he went home, we went to his trailer, he went to his hotel, and he started to feel sorry for himself. And then he had this light bulb moment. Actually, this isn't how I started my career. I started showing up, just being grateful to be on a movie set and around uh, people at the top of their game, the top of their profession. And he came on set the next day and he was full of uh, life and positivity and he had one line to deliver and he delivered it brilliantly to the best of his ability. And because of that, um, Sylvester Stallone changed the script, gave him much more um, airtime and actually more lines and he, he became uh, more of a central character in that movie. And he said, if you shift your attitude, you change your trajectory. That's such a powerful phrase, isn't it? You can be the solution, he said, not the problem. Don't be an issue. Don't turn up at work and be a problem. Be part of the solution. The job's hard enough as it is, he said. You don't have to be the one making things harder. You know, the idea of enjoying where you are today, giving it your all, and people are watching, and they'll give you those those opportunities. But that first phrase, there's no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. You turn up happy, you turn up grateful, and other things uh, start to happen for you. And, and when your attitude changes, that's when your future begins to change as well. I absolutely love that. And it got me thinking... What are, the, what are the three or four secrets to feeling happy? You know, if happiness is the way, how do we do that? So let's explore those today in today's podcast. How do you feel happier or how do you feel happy? What's the secret there? Maybe you feel like you'll be happier personally when you have just a bit more money, <laughs> or maybe you want a lot more money, uh, maybe you feel like you'll be happy when you're famous. You know, a lot of people want to be famous these days. They want to become celebrities. They want that that uh, public adoration. There is something about people uh, celebrating you, praising you, that feels good, isn't it? Maybe you feel like it's qualifications. A few letters after your name, that MA, that PhD, that, I don't know, choose some more letters. Maybe it's power for you. Maybe it's influence. You you don't worry about money. You're not, you don't want to be rich. You could live in a tiny little place, never had uh, any qualifications to your name. But if you're an influential person, if when you tweet, when you speak, people listen, sit up and listen, that, that, that will make you feel happy. You know, I think all of these things, money, fame, uh, qualifications, um, achievements, power, and ultimately influence, these things can be bad, but they're not bad in themselves. You know, I'm, um, there's nothing wrong with those things. I, I, in my life, I believe in becoming more successful. I believe in increasing honing my skills because i want to make a bigger contribution and you do need money don't you Uh, anyone who says you don't need money is lying you need money to take care of yourself that's the society we live in and to take care of those who you love if you have no money whatsoever then you can't help uh help those who who can't help themselves or who who just you are in your care children and perhaps other family members perhaps the elderly Uh, So we do need money and we do need a certain level of success. But is that really the key? Is that what we're going for? Kind of money, power, fame. Is that is that going to always return a feeling of happiness? I'm not sure that it does, actually. Are those things uh, things that perhaps you want or need, but do they make you happy? Well, I've been I've been very fortunate in my career. Um, I have 
been on TV a few times, I've been on the radio, national radio, I've written a little book, I've even performed on stage, um, uh, I wrote a little musical, but I didn't find any of those things ultimately made me feel happy. They made me feel fulfilled um, in, for a short period of time. It was exciting to plan, to do those things, to switch on and see yourself on TV. But but did they make me feel happy? Did it, was it a happiness that, that would last? I would say no, actually. So if those things don't make you happy, the things the world always tells us will make us happy, then what does? Well, I'm going to offer three Gs now. You know I like my alliteration. I'm going to give you three G's that I think do make for sustainable, lasting happiness, a feeling of happiness. And, you know, and happiness is quite an ethereal word, ethereal word, isn't it? It's quite a flimsy word. I guess we're talking in a way, we're talking peace and joy and feelings of deep contentment, really, rather than just kind of a, oh, because I'm happy. You know, everyone can listen to a happy song and for 30 seconds, for three minutes, feel happy. But we're talking about a lasting, more profound, daily, weekly, monthly rhythm of feeling like, actually, I feel really happy today. I'm really happy with my life. So the first one is this, where does happiness come from? It comes from being grateful. That sounds so so simple, doesn't it? Being grateful, realizing that actually you are already rich. You know, I was um, fortunate enough to travel to a few African nations when I was younger. And there was a moment where I was in a room with a um, hundred or so children. Uh, all of them were orphans, many of whom were orphaned through AIDS and HIV or other illnesses. And they did. They really didn't have much uh, going for them. They didn't have much to be happy about. But they were singing their little hearts out, and they had beaming smiles, and they were grateful for what they had. Now, do do I think that that should be their lot in life? No, I think they should have much more material things, much more um, uh, opportunities in life. Absolutely. But the fact that they they didn't need those things to feel happy was was quite profound for me. They had the sunshine, they had space to run and play. Um, Many of them did have their health. So even with nothing, it is possible to feel happy. And and we have so much more than nothing, don't we? Most of us don't have zero pounds, dollars um, in the bank, do we? Most of us have a little bit to spend, some choice about how we spend our day or the clothes we put on our back. And most of us have our health and access to some kind of health care. Um, as part of my job, I often use a stat, which is that two out of three people in the world, about five billion people around the globe, don't have any access whatsoever to any affordable, safe health care. I think just knowing that we, you know, if I fall over and bang my knee or whatever, if I fall ill, I can go and see a doctor, I can get some kind of prognosis and diagnosis, and I can get the help I need. Now, I know that in other parts of the world, there's, you know, in America, there's insurance and it's not perfect. But for the majority of the world, um, health is not a given. Health is uh, a luxury, almost a luxury item, health care and medical care. And, it's, and it shouldn't be. It's a necessity. And so if today you just think about your life for a moment, you might be feeling a bit low. You might be feeling a little sorry for yourself. Just think about for a moment, did you sleep in a bed last night? Did you have uh, secure windows and doors? Did you sleep somewhere where you felt like you were safe? Um, did you, in, when you woke up, um, have the ability to make yourself some breakfast and eat that breakfast? Um, have you got a bank account? Do you have a bank account? Does it have any money? Or at the very least, some facility where you can get some, get some money to, to do something that you want to do today? If you do, then you're already rich, you know, you you just have to look at some of the global markers. I think in my introduction to this podcast way back, I I talked about some of the stats and facts around, you know, the, uh, you know, if you're on 25 grand or something, even if you're, if you're on on five or 10 grand a year, you're rich in the, in the, in the standards of the world, in the relative to the, the extreme poverty around the world, you are absolutely stinking rich. Um, with health, with money, with safety, with 
with food with fresh water for goodness sake with a tap you can turn on in my country at least in england and drink the water that comes straight from the tap that my goodness throughout all history throughout the world right now that is wealth believe me that is rich that's that's a reason to feel happy so actually you know happiness doesn't have to be the big things you know the big fancy car those things are lovely but it can be the little things it's happiness is noticing and reveling in what you have already it's the ordinary moments of extraordinary bliss let's say and little things can make you feel so happy just little things you know eating a good meal um with someone you really love being with and and laughing with it can be uh, getting a good cup of coffee in a warm cozy kitchen on a frosty day that can make you feel really happy i'm not even kidding like i don't know anyone who can not eat who can eat a strawberry and not feel happy strawberries are the most amazing little berry fruit you know there's there's happiness in the small things actually not just in the big things sitting in the garden with a cold drink on a really beautiful sunny spring day or summer day there's nothing that beats that and you can feel happy that stuff doesn't cost a great deal of money. You know, Terry Crews was, was, was onto something and he reminded me and us, you know, this is the Someday Arrival podcast. He reminded me that Someday's already arrived. And yeah, let's strive for, for better, for more. Let's make a bigger contribution. Let's have a big dream. 100% believe in that. Um, but let's start with knowing that we're already rich, that we can already be grateful. And perhaps even doing that as a discipline at the start of a day, at the end of a day. For me, I'm a Christian. I pray. It's interesting. Scientists have found that what they call thankful meditation um, improves your well-being and increases your endorphins and oxytocin and makes you feel great and calm. And isn't it interesting? Thankful med- meditation. That sounds a lot like prayer to me. And so I list what I have. And I thank God for what I have. I try to do that before I bring my shopping list. Lord, I want this and this and this. And why haven't you done that? I try and start with God. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful for my kids, for my wife, for my life. I know so many have so little. And I'm so grateful for what you've given me and, and help me to use it well. And, um, and I, you know, before I bring my gripes, oh, this has gone wrong. This person's unwell. What are you doing, Lord? What's happening, Lord, in this world, in my in my in my situation what's going on before i do that and i think that's okay to bring all that stuff to god but i always start with with thank yous that's number one uh is being grateful number two being generous being kind to others giving our time giving our money away it seems counterproductive doesn't it our world says time is money time is money and money makes you happy so you should not be giving up your time and you should certainly not be giving up your money but actually giving money away um makes you happy the award-winning comic actor the global megastar the millionaire jim carrey said this i wish everyone could experience being rich and famous so they could finally realize it doesn't make you happy and it's not the answer now we can i know i know what some people are thinking they're thinking yeah that's that's all well and good you know if we're gonna cry you might as well cry in a in a in a supercar um but that's not the point the point is he's saying it's not going to make you happy these things are going to help they're going to be nice but they bring with them their own problems they don't make you happy they bring as much mo money mo problems they bring as many problems as they do sources of happiness so one way is to give money away to give our time away effectively to to help someone solve a problem that's what terry was talking about wasn't it helping someone else solve a problem makes you feel happier Uh, making life better for another person makes you feel happier as well as them it's a funny thing and the moments i've been happiest the moments i've been happiest are when i've helped bring a smile to someone else's face i think that's a profound thought by bringing a smile to someone else's face you feel happy too and better still there have been moments when i have played a small role in improving the life of someone especially someone who's been unwell uh, or someone who's who's poor who perhaps even lives in poverty now that has made me feel truly happy and that is a uh, that's a real contradiction in, in in the in the eyes of the world i think sometimes given giving what you have your money your time your energy 
your talents to make someone else feel happy, lo and behold, you walk away with a smile on your own face. And the third one is grace. Showing grace, accepting grace. Living with guilt, for example, will make you unhappy. If you're doing things you know are making you feel guilty, then it's not rocket science. You're going to feel unhappy. Shame makes you sick. In my opinion, shame, feeling shame will, will make you feel sick, make you feel unhappy. It could even make you physically unwell. It takes a toll on your body. You need to let go of toxic stuff, toxic people maybe. You know, so being a bad guy, a bad woman means you usually live not only feeling ashamed of yourself, feeling like you could do better, be better, but also you could even be living in fear, fear of being found out for this thing, fear of retribution or revenge to the person or the people that you are not being kind to or being actively unkind to. Fear will make you sad as well as feeling scared. And so I would say grace, show grace, accept grace, you know, be merciful to others, choose mercy. When you can choose revenge, when you can choose kindness or unkindness, choose mercy, choose to forgive others, choose not to hurt others who have hurt you even. Um, uh, there's a great phrase, isn't there, that to err, to, to make a mistake is human, but to forgive is divine. So choose, choose to forgive. Um, I, I love them. I'm, I'm sure I'm paraphrasing this wrong, but unforgiveness being a poison that you drink, hoping the other person will die, <laughs> basically, or get ill. Yeah, it's something you do to yourself that makes you miserable, and you you you, you think this unforgiveness, um, this hatred is going to hurt this other person. All it's doing is eating you up. So forgive them. You know, I'm not saying put up with something. I'm not saying stay with someone who's hurting you, but you can move on. You can forgive them and accept grace. Now, I'm not going to get too, I don't know, a little religious is the word now, but I would say that sometimes the hardest person to forgive is yourself, and, and we have to start by knowing that um, God wants to forgive us. So, you know, I, as a Christian, I believe I'm forgiven, and that certainly makes me feel happy. Ultimately, everyone's doing their best, aren't they? Everyone's making mistakes. Everyone has their struggles. Everyone has blind spots. We are all a work in progress. You are, I am, that other person who you've been thinking about right now is. You're not perfect, but neither am I. So let's show mercy, let's show grace to ourselves and treat others as you want to be treated. The golden rule, love others and treat others exactly how you'd want to be treated. And I think that holds up today, doesn't it? And Jesus also tells a story uh, about a guy filling this barn. You just imagine this giant barn made, I don't know, maybe wood or, and he's, and he's building a bigger and bigger barn. Every time he fills it with good things and his riches, his, his crops, his harvest, he thinks, I just need a bigger barn, then I can just stop. Once I've got my big house, my big car, my, my big job title, then I'll be able to be happy. You know, tomorrow I'll be happy. And um, it's a bit of a tragic story because he ends up with the biggest barn possible and it's absolutely bursting at the seams and he thinks, that's it, tomorrow I'm retiring, I've made it. And then God says, but little do you know, I'm going to require you, your, your life tonight. And he, he doesn't make it to the morning and someone else gets to enjoy the fruit of his labours. So I think there's something to be said for enjoying each day. So how to be happy, how to feel happy for longer. Reduce your stress, watch your mood, watch the things that affect your mood, absolutely. And then the three Gs, gratefulness. Write down each night three things that you're grateful for, that you're thankful for. So number one is gratefulness. Number two is generosity. Share some of what you've been given with others. Share some of what you've been given with others. That might be knowledge it might be money it might be quality time you might say darren i don't have much knowledge i don't have many qualifications i'm i'm not the smartest person I certainly don't have any money right now mate um but what you've got is your time your time is the most valuable and um, precious thing you have and and there might be a person just one person who you spending attentive quality time with them me would mean the world to them would make a huge difference to their world, would make them feel happy. And uh, in doing so, you could put a smile on your own face. So generosity, it feels good to be generous. 
research and science has shown it, but just do it anyway. <laughs> it's the right thing to do. Um, number three, grace. Accept grace. Show grace. Yeah, go easy on yourself. Allow yourself to actually enjoy today while you're working for that better tomorrow, that big someday. Forgive and be forgiven. That can lift a, a huge weight off of your soul, off your shoulders. So show some grace. To err as human, to forgive as divine. So forgiveness could be your superpower, couldn't it? In this world where people are very slow to forgive. And above all, remember, there is no way to happiness. There is no way to someday. Instead, make someday today. <laughs> So thank you once again for joining me on the Someday Arrival podcast as we've even thought about the fact that we are already there. We've already arrived at Someday. Uh, it doesn't mean then things won't get better. It doesn't mean we shouldn't have big dreams, but there you are. Uh, please join me again. If you found this uplifting, edifying, think of small words, fun, <laughs> and positive, encouraging in a time when there's so much bad news, please do share it with someone. Uh, just maybe just as a three dots I think or some kind of share button you could stick it on a whatsapp to a friend or you could um, send an email does anyone ever send emails anymore um, you could message someone and just say hey look look up the Sunday Arrival podcast I think there's something there that really brighten your day it might bring off a smile to your face and uh, that would that would really help the podcast as well we've got a few listeners but it'd be great to have a few more and so please um, do stay safe out there and make Sunday today mm-hmm.